Hi everybody, I'm Dawn and I'm one of the carnivore keepers here at the Phoenix Zoo and right now I'm in front of the cheetah exhibit. We're going to be letting our three cheetah boys out in just a minute. We put some treats out on the exhibit for them, um, some bloodsicles, which is one of the carnivores favorite treats in the summertime. It's like a popsicle for carnivores. It's made with uh, the drippings from their regular diet mixed with water and frozen into a, a big block of ice. Um, so we have three boys here at the zoo. Uh, we've got Dirk, DeMarco and Boykin and they are five years old. They're gonna be turning six uh, this year in December. And there are a coalition of males here. Um, typically in the wild, female cheetahs are gonna be solitary. Um, they hunt by themselves unless they've got a litter of cubs hunting with them. They stay with mom until they're about 18 to 20 months old and then they go off on their own. But males in the wild form something we call a coalition, which is usually a group of a couple of related males like the brothers we have here. And they do that so they can hold a, a larger territory with good access to prey and females. Um, cheetahs typically hunt uh, smaller hoofstock species like an impala or a Thompson's gazelle, uh, that kind of thing. And I'm sure you all know cheetahs are known for being the fastest land mammal on earth. These guys can run about 65 to 70 miles per hour. Um, but they can only sustain that speed for about a quarter of a mile. So their, uh, their strategy for hunting is to get as close to their prey as they possibly can so that they can uh, ambush them, put on that burst of speed. And they can go from zero to 65 miles per hour in only two to three strides. So it's pretty impressive. And they've got some really cool adaptations for that speed. They've got something we call semi-retractable claws. So like your typical cat, um, when they're resting, you can't see their claws, they're retracted inside the paw. But cheetah's claws are always visible. They look more like dog nails, and they use that to grip the ground, um, kind of like football or uh, baseball cleats to get traction. Um, and they've got um, tails that are round near the base at their body. They kind of flatten out at the tip, and they use those for rudders. If you've ever seen footage of a cheetah hunting, they make these sharp hairpin turns and they'll swing that tail kind of like a counterbalance. That's something that helps them catch their prey as well. Um, when they're gonna be out here in just a minute, uh, you'll get to see uh, their black tear stains on their eyes. That helps them with their vision. It's kind of like when you see a, a football or baseball player put that black under their eyes, helps cut the glare from the sun. So that's something else that helps them, their vision when they're hunting. And they're just really cool animals. I can't wait for you to see them come down and get their treat. Here they come. It looks like we've got Dirk up in the front here. And DeMarco is right behind him. And then Boykin. <laughs> One of the ways we can tell them apart is that no two cheetahs have the same spots. They all have unique markings. So the keepers can learn to look for the different spot patterns and also the rings on their tail, tail will help us tell them apart. I don't know if you can hear any of the little vocalizations they're making. Cheetahs actually can't roar. It has to do with the uh, hyoid bones in their throats. Um, so unlike the jaguars and lions and tigers who can roar, cheetahs can't roar. Um, but they do make a lot of other vocalizations. They make chirps that almost sound like a little <laughs> a bird. They're making a few little growls and barks at each other right there. So cheetahs um, don't have a strong hierarchy like the dogs would, like the Mexican wolves or the African painted dogs have a very strong alpha. Um, the cheetahs will sometimes have a, a more dominant alpha cat, but it's a very loose hierarchy. Um, in our group, Dirk tends to be um, kind of the more adventurous one. Uh, he's the one who's going to investigate things first. DeMarco tends to be the most laid back. Um, we actually think DeMarco is the alpha, um, but like I said, it's a very loose um, hierarchy. And then Boykin's kind of in between the two. He's not um, quite as adventurous as Dirk, but he's not as laid back as DeMarco. 